guys, it's me. Um, I'm sorry that I've been so terrible at filming, but when I'm working on an album, I really need like mental space and time to do stuff and not to be like in front of people virtually. So my album just came out. Hallelujah. And I wanted to share with you how I made the songs. Now there are 13 songs in the album, so I'm gonna try to keep this brief. But um, let's start from track one. I wanted to say that it takes money to release things. And so if you're a person who it feels like they're financially stable in any way and really enjoys my music, thank you so much. I'm gonna leave my Venmo there. So if you are interested in giving any donations for a struggling artist, then that would be so appreciated by me. If you feel the need or desire or ability to do that, that would be amazing. The first song on the album is called Cut My Breaks. Uh, it's the only song that I wrote without an acoustic guitar. So I started playing around with this MIDI bass melody and I was kind of feeling it and then I just started ad-libbing like on my, my headphones about something that had happened to me earlier that day. And then I was like, this is a song. Like this is like a about my brain and how I overthink every interaction I have with anyone and how I'm intrinsically insecure that people hate me constantly. So this is a song, the production is full of like a bunch of super weird stuff because I worked with it for a long time because it originally had this MIDI bass in it that was the backbone of it and I produced it in November and then a couple people that I showed it to were like hey this is a really interesting song but like production wise this ain't it sis and I was like you right you right you right and so then I <laughs> reproduced it and chipped away at it for the next couple months until I felt like I really loved it. So there is so many weird things. Let me go through the samples that are in here. Okay, so the backbone of it is this sample of my friend's car beeping when it tells you to put the seatbelt on. I took the voice memo and then I cut it up and then I turned it into a sample. When I was in Florida for spring break, I downloaded this thing from YouTube of a small group of people clapping and then I turned that into and I also took this wooden metronome that my friend had at her house over spring break where I was so that's a real live wooden metronome one of my roommates alarm clock you hear that? I have this can opener from my friend's house and I have like a voice memo of me listening to the can opener and being like, oh, that's a really weird sound. And then I turned it into, I just cut it up. I think I EQ'd it. And yeah, and it turned into this weird song and it has this kalimba morph in it. And I took some Apple Loop guitars. What I will do is I'll take an Apple Loop guitar. And if it's like one note, then you can typically pitch it. So you can change, change it to make it match whatever um, key your song is in. And that goes like this. Next. Now, I wrote Tell Your Hands in August, and I wasn't going to release it originally because I was like, this is kind of spicy. Chipped away at the production for a long time because I really wanted it to sound like I Think He Knows by Taylor Swift. Amazing. Such a good song. But I realized that one of the reasons why I Think He Knows sounds the way it does is because the melody itself of the chorus is a rhythm. He got my heart beat. Skipping on 16th Avenue, got that eye. I mean, wanna see what's under that eye too. It's like, it's like the whole, it's like syncopated, the rhythm of the actual melody. Whereas Tell Your Hands is like, we go too far for what we call this, these lines we've drawn. So it doesn't work the same way and keeping the beat like. <laughs> so I kind of had to give up on that um, cause I wanted it to be more stripped down. So I have this tiny, nylon kalimba just 
kept it really tight, really chill. And then I have these bamboo bell patterns. The, the snap I'm using is Indie Disco and Beat Machine mixed together. So for the chorus, what I actually did in an attempt to make it sound more like I think he knows, I dipped and faded the volume of all of the scents when the beat dropped. So basically whenever there's like a, like a clap or something that's on the rhythm, I dip them so it's kind of like wavy with the beat. So I have this electron patterns. And then I have this heavy sub bass. See how that dips every time there's like a clap? And that just makes the clap feel a little bouncier and not as, you know, drowned out by all the other heavy sub basses. And then when it um, goes into, baby, we don't love it, we don't tell the truth. You know, I say a lot of things that I don't do. Then I add in this kind of like analog, like 80s thing of. Part of this beat is made by me. Um, Tell Your Hands is a pretty fun song. I really enjoyed making it. Um, I also wanted there to be like a big um, kind of like out of the woods drums. Um, I found this thing called a bike riser and then I did this indie disco that are the same thing but they're pan so one is this way and one is this way. So for Projector, um, it was one of the last songs I wrote on my album and it's almost like a frankly I blame Charlie Davis part 2 because it's just about my dumb brain when I like someone and how it turns into this really negative, irritating thing for me. And so I wrote Projector and I just like laughed the whole time I was writing it. I asked my dad to do the guitar for it and it was originally gonna be like this similar guitar to Now We Can Get Drinks. But then my dad did the guitar for it and I was like, okay, dad, this is like not really what I ask you to do. But then the more I listened to it, I was like, actually, this is like kind of sick. I kind of wanted it to be a sonic mixture of Falling for Boys by Julian Michaels, Birthday Party by AJR. That's why I added all these weird um, oboes and clarinets and stuff. But also Fight or Flight by Conan Gray. My dad did this very like dirty Hendrix style guitar. In the second verse, the clarinet and oboe come in. Very AJR style. I wanted it to be this like crazy symphonic orchestral thing, so I added a bunch of weird stuff. Military drum kind of thing. And then in the last chorus, I wanted it to sound like the end of um, these days by Wallows where it gets really like Indian stripped down So I just recorded acoustic guitar on my iPhone like two, three or four different takes of it and then layered them together Also one of my favorite parts of this entire song is my very Julia my very Julia Michaels esque what? what? Now let's go to tug of war. So I wrote tug of war in about January after having a conversation with my friend about our mutual experience of wanting to be better but also being afraid of being different. So this internal dichotomy of hating yourself but also having this intrinsic fear of not um, recognizing yourself if you become better. I originally planned on making it just an acoustic guitar and voice song but then I was like can't do acoustic guitar as usual, I'm not good at playing that. So I freaked out and was like, who needs them? I um, produced it all <laughs> in like six hours to sound like Invisible String because I've been listening to Invisible String by Taylor Swift on repeat for like the last seven days. 
I want it to sound like really acoustic-y, but also like almost like slightly sloppy in terms of making it kind of like have a lot of heart. Kalimba. There's this Cheron. Cher, 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 Cheron? I don't know. I It's from Spitfire Audio. Yeah, you guys should definitely check out Spitfire Audio. It's free MIDI plugins, like free, completely free. So this Cheron is one of them. So, and then I use a pad from Spitfire. And then I use some violas. And whenever I do strings in a song, I always want to make sure that they don't sound super fake. So I want to make sure that there's not like more strings than would actually be played by human beings in one room together. Um, and I use the piano from Spitfire, which is my new favorite thing. I use it in like six of the songs on this album. It is like this soft piano that sounds super natural and real. I wrote Hero on guitar in November after a really rough night. I'm always interested to know what people think Hero is about, but to me, I wrote Hero about the idea that selflessness can be selfish, and basically recognizing within yourself the desire to save someone, or the desire to feel really good about yourself when you're helping someone or when you're being there for someone, and just kind of like calling that out in yourself and um, realizing that in order to really love people, you can't make it about you. I originally wrote it on guitar, and I was gonna have my friend Will do it on guitar for me, and we recorded the guitar uh, for like two hours, and then I got home and was like, yeah, it's too fast, also I don't want it to be a guitar song. So <laughs> I just like labored away painstakingly at making this piano. Then my friend Kelsey suggested I make it sound a little bit more like The Archer by Taylor Swift, so I added some synth pads. And I added the Chirango, Charon Chir Chirango. The next song is Boys in My Room. Uh, Boys in My Room to me is about um, a culture that I grew up in that teaches girls to fear men and boys because they are monsters of lust unmistakably and can never get away from that. It's just part of who they are and so they can't be blamed for it. And alongside that, a culture that teaches girls that they're simultaneously completely responsible for their sexuality but also completely out of control of it. Like it's something that is surrendered or saved and that's the only options. And so I wanted to write a song that addressed a lot of different corners of that entire mindset. And just kind of realizing that the things that I've even subconsciously been taught have been proven time and time again to not hold as objective across the board. And I think that that's one of the main issues with that whole mindset is that it's saying this is how boys are and this is how girls are and there are no exceptions. And so kind of experiencing me growing up and me coming into my own and then being really close friends with different types of guys and realizing that they are all not the same either <laughs> and people are people <laughs> and regardless of their gender they have minds and hearts and wills and I've witnessed many a time the concept of not every vice keeps its vow. It's something that I really felt strongly about and wanted to talk about in a song. I wanted to produce this song to sound like more by Halsey, so I made, I think I started producing this when I was at Starbucks. So most of it is like pads and a deep sub bass, and then there's these bamboo bell patterns that kind of keep the, keep the time. The weird, weird scent that you hear, maybe you guys are wondering what that is. Voice memo of my friend singing I think he was like singing harmony or like matching someone's pitch when I was at this party. The cool 
cool thing is you can he still hear people talking in the background of the sample. So I, I cut that up and then I sampled it and so I could play it on a keyboard. So Myopia is a song about forgetting the most basic things that you believe in. And there's a lot of um, imagery in there about the Israelites in Exodus. Because the story of the Israelites, I think whether you're religious or not, is something that we can all relate to. Because it's literally like God brings Moses and sends plagues. Fire from heaven, lotus from heaven, turning the Nile River into blood. But then throughout the story of Exodus, after being saved from a life of slavery with crazy ridiculous miracles. If they're left alone for 10 minutes, they've already freaked out and had an existential crisis about whether or not God loves them and made a fake cow and started bowing down to it. The first line of the song, Pharaoh's in the chariot and I'm all alone. I get bored of miracles and pray to hollow gold. It's about the idea of standing on the bank of the river and seeing Pharaoh and his army coming down. I don't know if you guys have ever seen The Prince of Egypt, you should watch it. Seeing Pharaoh and his army coming down and having this moment of, well, we're screwed, God doesn't love us after all of that, right before God parts the sea for them and they walk through on dry land. So it's basically about the absurdity of forgetting the most basic things you believe in. The word nearsighted in Greek is where we get the word for nearsightedness, like eyesight, um, which is myopia. I got my dad to do the guitar and the bass on it. My sister was house sitting and my parents were in town in Nashville and me and my dad went upstairs and he bought this bass so that he could play on it while he was in town. I also have this music box that's from Spitfire. Come Clean is a song that I skipped school to finish writing. I'd written a bunch of notes in my phone that were going to be for the song. So I stayed home from school and wrote it and I wanted it to be, obviously, as you can probably tell, very Taylor Swift-ian. <laughs> Taylor Swift-ian. Very out of the woods. So I wanted these big drums. I put a ring shifter on these indie disco drums. It makes them really like warped and like pan. So the backbone is this really weird synth. I was going to do this part with a live guitar, but then I actually really liked it more with these two claves. And then I actually did use an apple loop, this wall loop, to make that work a little more better. There's this synthetic harp for Bottles underneath the passenger seat, hop behind the steering wheel, think we saw the police. Passenger seat, hop behind the steering wheel, think we saw the police. Ask you what you're doing with your hand on my knee, and you said, Does it have to be something? is interesting because I wrote it because I was rediscovering my favorite album of all time, which is Melodrama by Lord. This was in maybe March or April. And I was like, I want to write a song like melodrama, ugh. I want to remember what it's like to write songs for fun. It was just supposed to be like, oh, this sounds like something Lord would do, and this is really fun to write. And so I had so much fun just tinkering with all the lyrics of the bottles in blue light, careless and cutthroat, run with this cruel knife, then where my guts go. Like, I can be mean, but I can't be honest. But then at the end of the week, when I looked back at this demo that I had made, I was like, this is really honest. The whole song is about just this unstable relationship with two people in a religious context. This unstable relationship makes you question the character of the God that you believe in. The instability of this relationship is the only thing that you can count on. That's why the end of the chorus line is, cause how much I don't believe you might be the thing I believe in. Cause it's about this kind of like, who are you today relationship. Um, interesting samples in this song, my niece, if you may have seen this on Instagram, but I, my baby niece talking, if, if I take all of those things away from it. 
yeah, it's a baby. The pre-chorus vocals to be like very, to be very loud, to be like people yelling, people kind of doing like na 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 boo boo yelling, and then this very like dry like in your ear thing. Shoot me with sparks. Oh, eyes are eyes cold. Hey, really hard. Don't how this might go. Played my gaze and said you're a psycho. Played my gaze and said you're a psycho, but you're just a buzzkill taking the high road. And also, there's a voice memo of pouring wine. Lightweight is a song I wrote in this room over Christmas break in one sitting. I remember it being one or two sittings. It's basically about two people who play really hard and play really tough, but at the end of the day are both really emotionally vulnerable and volatile. I wrote it about a friend of mine that I love so much and it's always going to be a special song to me because it kind of tells the story of me falling in love with him as a person. I fist fight with questions, won't believe I really know you. You wrestle and sometimes you run, but you always stop to smell the roses. Declaring war with our thumbs, sharpen swords that will never swing. Getting all tough, but never actually gonna do anything about how tough we are. I wanted the song to sound like Partners in Crime by Phineas, because oof, if you've never heard that song, please listen to it. I, I discovered it while I was driving back from the train station over Christmas break, and I literally listened to it like seven times in a row the first time I heard it. Um, so the beginning of the song is a voice memo of my friend's buzzing pipe in her basement and in the chorus I wanted it to sound really like close almost like the Sufjan Stevens thing slightly so I did this ensemble effect on my voice Act like nothing makes me black and blue. I did a really rough acoustic guitar that's kind of like messy but but I put um, fuzz wah on it One more thing, in the bridge, there is... That's the sound effect of pool balls. And this adds a really interesting ambiance. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. I basically just wanted to write a song that had that as a title. And I also really wanted to write a song that wasn't about a specific situation, but about a feeling. And it ended up being this song about the feeling that I had throughout fall and winter, which was when you feel more alone when you're with someone than when you're away from them. And this fighting void of fragility, of wanting to feel something, and how that sucks all of your relationships into that void. So I just wanted to kind of like mess around with it, make this really weird song um, that was reminiscent of the 1975's instrumental tracks, also Bon Iver's 20 to a Million. So I have the alarm clock from Cut My Breaks, but I have a microphaser on it, so it does this. I have my dad moving a chair at a bar that had a concrete floor, and so when I sampled it, it sounded like almost like this weird harmonica. I had the subway when I was in New York. I have my professor's daughter whistling. I have my professor playing a Mongolian horse fiddle. Um, I have the beep from Emma's car, the pipe from Lightweight, and then I have all these random voice memos of people talking that I don't really know why I put them in. They just kind of... So I have a lot of friends who are from like the State College area. My dad saying what is more important. <laughs> As my sister Joy talking about how pointing out the depravity of the world is not an artistic endeavor that's worthwhile. Light is not the discovery that people are fallen. Light is not the discovery that people are fallen. And then I have the same um, ooh from Boys in My Room. And then the end is, I wrote, we're underwater and the streets are vacant. Had more to offer, but I don't know if you take it. In a journal that I had when I was 
13 years old that I found over Christmas break. I just used a vocoder from Logic. Now we came with drinks I wrote last July. I wanted to be a mix of Stay Together by Noah Cyrus and then also kind of like 100 Bad Days by AJR. So what I did is I made this bottle breakdown just like in 100 Bad Days with spoons. I did that with bottles because I worked at a liquor store and so I had all these voice memos of me clinking bottles together. And so I sampled them. I also have a sample of my friend blowing into a bottle. These are wood chimes that I found at someone's house over Thanksgiving. When my friend Kelsey saying, did you film that? I walked into my friend's house a day before I left Tennessee and I said, hey, I'm here to record you guys singing a line. Please help me. With their beautiful, beautiful voices, <laughs> I got them to do. One of my favorite parts of this is this before talkies piano that is doing the funnest little bar stool thing. The last couple weeks of school, I didn't write a song because I was stressed about finals. And so the last three weeks, I would just take walks and listen to Hosier and Mac DeMarco and just take notes in my phone about things I'd been thinking about and lines that I thought would make cool song lines. And then when I graduated, the day I graduated, I was like, okay, this needs to be one song. I need to like get it all out and write an entire song about my entire year. So that's what I did. I pieced all the lines together that day and wrote Highway Wildflowers. And it means a lot to me because it basically is the culmination of the entire album. And I planned on Now We Can Get Drinks being the last song on the album for the whole year. But then when I wrote this, I knew that it answered all the questions the album had asked. Because there's a lot of parts within the album of me having revelations or asking these really difficult questions about who I am and who the people around me are and who the God I believe in is. And feeling despair about all of those things because of the confusing and conflicting and painful relationships that you see throughout the album. Highway Wildflowers is kind of the culmination of all these things that made you doubt the goodness of where you are in your life are ultimately the things that reveal their goodness. Second Kings 2.14 talks about how when Elijah goes up in a chariot of fire his protege, Elisha, I know, confusing, um, asks for a double portion of his blessing. In order to get that, he has to watch him go up into heaven. And so after he goes up, he's standing at the bank and Elisha says, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And strikes the river with his staff and the river splits open and he crosses through it. I read that verse today, a friend of mine passed away and I felt like it was a really accurate portrayal of where a lot of people are in their life, religious or non-religious. Just the idea of waiting for a sign and there's people who feel like they have received that sign and people who feel like they have not received that sign. So I got my friend Justin, amazing musician, Justin Schumacher, you should just check out his music. I got him to do the guitar for this and then I got my friend Selena um, who's a huge influence in my life this year. She's one of my best friends um, to do harmony. We recorded this the day I left <laughs> on an iPhone because I had already packed away my mic. I, I wanted the end of the song to sound like Leader of the Landslide by the Lumineers. And so I added tambourine. Also this drum, piano, this sa same piano. It's 
really soft piano, doubled with a harder piano. Thank y'all so much for listening to this album. It really is crazy that it's out. I spent so long in it and thought so much about it for such a long time, so it's wild that it's out in the world. But I hope y'all have a fantastic day, and I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit more of the bones of this album.